Hey guys, just before the podcast gets started, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Yellow Squared podcast. It's a Sunday, James. We're back recording another loss. Uh, Huddersfield at home, the annual loss at Hud- against Huddersfield at home, James. How how are you doing this morning? I'm I'm doing well, uh, personally. Um, you said it's our annual loss to Huddersfield. I think it's technically our annual implosion at home to Huddersfield. <laughs> it's, uh, we always take the lead. It seems to be. We always take the lead and then we just completely melt away. Mm. Um I think this pod, mate, is going to be a cathartic episode to work out some of the frustrations. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. simply put, yesterday was unacceptable for a variety of issues, yes. in my opinion. Yeah, but um, we'll get on but, yeah, to all yeah. that and more uh, in in the later stages of the podcast. Yeah, hottest build at home, and like you said, then we'll be chatting about. Uh, some news that was filtering around, I appreciate it's from Talk Sports, so it's basically just trust me on that. Uh, <laughs> that's the source, essentially. But uh, yeah, the, there is news that uh, apparently Ishmael is on the brink of being sacked. So we wanted to kind of sit down and, and just sort of have a chat about what does that actually mean for Watford? And uh, does that signify, um, you know, the start of the end for Juno Pozzo? And uh we we kind of feel like we have one of these podcasts a season now, don't we? We had one last season. Um, yeah, March, so, March, February time. March, yeah, February time, isn't yeah, it? That's, so that's usually the point. <laughs> we've got to this stage of the year again and, and have decided we need another podcast. Um, you know, I mean, ideally, it would be helpful if we could get Gino on the pod just to explain what's going on. But uh, <clears throat> He's not returning my calls. No, no, he hasn't been responding to my emails either. So... <laughs> I don't think he's going to be coming on any anytime soon. I don't think Scott Duxbury will be either. But there is no better place to get started, to, to forget everything else for a moment, uh, all things Watford. We will get started with Guess the Player, James. 13-10 to you currently. You are yep. quiz master for this week, so I will <laughs> let you get things. Get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling, yeah. Very apt football reference yes mate guess the player um (laughs) guess the player this week ladies and gentlemen um uh are you ready mate because uh i've had to drill through the annals of uh, sort of watford programs and players and i've been chatting to a few people as as to come up with a name that uh would be a bit of a throwback or maybe not um to see how okay. uh to see how well you know Watford okay uh, Watford okay. players uh seeing as I managed to dig Matthew Connolly out last week <laughs> yeah. are you ready for clue number one yeah I am ready yeah okay I signed for Watford at the start of the 2006-2007 season from my childhood club Giori Etio scoring my first goal in a League Cup tie against Hull City in October 2006. Brilliant. What a fantastic (laughs) clue that is. (laughs) Right. Well, this... (laughs) I can sense... I can smell a one-pointer from a mile off here. Um... Could you could you just repeat parts of that clue again? So they they signed in two thousand six oh seven. Signed, signed at the start of the 06-07 season. Yeah. They came from their childhood club, Giori Etio. I okay. believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah. I'll trust you. And on. they scored their first goal in a League Cup tie against Hull City in the October of that season. In October of that season, so October two thousand six. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Um. I haven't got a clue what team that is or what country it's from. Um, I'm gonna guess it's not in the uh, not in England. <laughs> something, yeah, correct. Something yeah. tells me it's not. Um, yeah. Okay, boyhood club. So they're they're obviously not an English player. Um, correct. I I really can't think of many players from 06, 07 that aren't 
English or at least British. Mm-hmm. So this is a this is gonna be a complex oh, one for me to that. guess. I tell you what. I oh, no, I t- tell you what. I will say they were a striker. I'll oh. just add that in there for you. I'll add that in there for you. I'm going to guess. I don't know if he signed in this season or not, but I'm going to have a guess and say Thomas Priskin. I mean, I really shouldn't have said that at all, should I? Oh, you love to see it. Three <laughs> points on the board. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sensational. Oh, I should, yes. The, I shouldn't have said the strike a bit there. Oh, yes. shouldn't have said it. I was worried for you. Um, yeah, Thomas Priskin. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, I can't believe that. I couldn't He's... really tell you much about Thomas Priskin. Um... Well, I can tell you he made 68 appearances for us, scoring oh. 15 goals. Uh, and then he, he moved to Ipswich Town for 1.7 mil. Wow. Yeah, and I mean... he ended up... He, he scored more goals internationally in less games um, for Hungary. Oh, wow. He scored 17 goals in 63. But... Uh, Phil, I, I was surprised by his goal return, actually, as mm. a Watford player. I thought he scored a lot more than that, but, but clearly not. Must have just scored fair, more uh, important goals. Yeah, I think so. I think it was the final season for us where he kind of really became a, the sort of the main striker, really, didn't he? Because I, I don't really remember him. In the, he, didn't, he didn't do too much in the Premier League. and then Well, none of them in, did, really, it, did they? No. Um and then I don't think he did too much in the in the um, in the, the season after that. So we really only had one season with us and scored 15 goals in that season. So wow. I reckon we could have probably done with a striker like that at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Andre Gray is a fun call. Play, mate. Well, yes. Fair play, mate. 13 all. GG. Yeah. Wow. I actually can't believe I've dug that out, by the way. I genuinely That's... couldn't tell you a single goal he scored or what any of the goals looked like. Um <laughs> and I couldn't really remember any player that wasn't English in that from from that period. So yeah. I've pulled you know, it out he was, somewhere. He was uh, he did score uh, in the Premier League on the 9th of April, right at the end when we beat Portsmouth four two. If you can remember that's that, that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've seen those highlights somewhere. The game where Gavin Mann thunder swear worded it into the, uh, <laughs> into, yeah. the in, into the. Top corner, but he actually scored. Uh, he he scored his first Premier League goal a lot earlier than that, but the game was abandoned. Oh. Um, it rained off. I think it was against Wigan. Yeah, against Wigan on my notes. Oh. So yeah, there you oh, go, mate. Nice. Thirteen uh, all. Yeah. Guess the player done for the week again gives us more time to um, I suppose go into what we're about to go into now, eh? Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, viewers. Um. Strap in. That's what I'm going to say for this. Okay. Yeah, it's a safe space now. Come on, everybody. It is a safe space. You can feel free to comment whatever you like within reason. Okay, James. I thankfully didn't watch any of the game yesterday. Um, I was travelling back uh, from my own football game. So I was Watford free. um, Put my phone on Do Not Disturb on the way home. I I was not interested Um, yep. and, and thankfully, I, I feel like thankfully I did that because if I'd have looked at Watford Twitter, uh, I, I briefly looked and it did not seem positive. So I swiftly removed myself from that. Um, and yeah, I uh, I'm gonna hand this over to you, James. You know, we don't yeah. have a we don't have a huge window of time, but feel free to, yeah. to get whatever you need to off your chest. Okay, yeah, I will, uh, because I think a lot of the a lot of the key points are going to come out more about the the discussion slightly after. So, yeah. um, I mean, in short, yesterday was uh, was abject. Uh, lots of people have said it's the worst performance they've seen Watford put in in years. Um, There's a lot I, of choice recently. Yeah, it was it was really really bad. And what I would say was, <clears throat> you know, the first twenty minutes were was terrible terrible football uh we looked scared we looked nervous ponderous slow um that we couldn't get control of the midfield we were being overrun we weren't making any passes really simple passes were going astray we nearly gifted Huddersfield two goals by just passing the ball to them in the middle of the middle of the pitch um 
which which led to Kone and Kayembe being hooked on the 26th minute mark, um, which is a talking point in itself. Very brave decision from from Val. And uh, and I mean, on on the face of it, it initially it, it worked. Um, Tom Ince and Chak Vatadze came on, and I will say were um, more combative, were travelling with the ball better. And and to be fair, I think from about 30 minutes onwards, it was much, much more of an even game and it was being played in Huddersfield's half. Yeah, Huddersfield had a game plan to try and sneak a goal uh, and then just, just sit deep. Um, and at half-time, at nil-nil, um, it really gave me the impression that, um, frustratingly, I, I believed we'd gone to win the game because I thought we were the team with more quality hmm. uh, and we had more players within the side to um to to combine with a you know a moment of of quality to to probably sneak the game and you know we'd be talking this morning about well we did it we got through it um you know two back to back clean sheets six points from six and you know a bit of progress to be made and to be fair second half started like that in my opinion when i was watching it um, again, it was pretty cagey, but Aspria got the ball out on the right-hand side, did the defender, travelled really well and played the ball in to the box. And it was a lovely touch from Dennis, who had been quiet all game, but uh, I thought he was so much more effective up front um, than Rajevic was, just through his pace and movement. And he was able mm. to drift off the shoulder yeah. and... Uh, and he's he's an athletic guy. He's not the tallest guy, but he's he, he's got a good jump on him. And, and he was forcing yes. Huddersfield defenders to um, to make a make a challenge uh, and at least compete with him, which obviously Rybic just doesn't do. Lashed it in one nil, fifty five minutes, and I thought, okay, they've had the halftime rocket, um, and it's worked. We've got the goal, and uh, hopefully we can kick on and get a second. It didn't come. Not without chances, I must say. Martins came on, and and Semmer was doing well down the left, and um, Tom Ince had a good couple of chances where the ball was played into him, and he's just sort of hooked it over. Um, one of the turning points of the second half was Dennis going off injured, mm. uh, felt his groin apparently, which meant Ryevich came on, and as much as we like the guy, um, I said it last week. Yeah. He's just out of his depth. He cannot compete. We ended up playing the final 30 minutes of that game with 10 men. He offered nothing. He was losing the ball. Um, he, I think within the first couple of minutes, he tried a pass and he had just played it straight into the feet of a Huddersfield player. And he had chances. Um, two the chances. Ball was, big, two two chances. chances. The ball was... Anyway. Two chances, well, anyway. They were chances that a big, towering striker put on the goal forces a save. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. And then the implosion happened. Um, Huddersfield's goal comes from nowhere in the sense that a throw in played back to their left back. And there was literally no centre mid. They're closing down. It was Tom Ince and Jack with Tadze were miles away. And it was allowed the freedom of Vickard road to put a ball into the box. And it's a good ball in, but mm. um, you know, the small Danny Ward, I think it was, uh, manages to get a leap on Ken Semmer, who's not a, who's playing at left back at this point. Decent header. Hamer gets a hand to it, but it's always going in. And then the you know whatever it was ten minutes later, the inevitable happened. A yeah. sort of a scuffed scuffed cross, but um, the striker gets ahead gets ahead of the um, the defender, tucks it in, and then you're staring at at the barrel of a defeat. And w- w- what really concerned me was. Um, we didn't really rally. We didn't really put Huddersfield under any pressure. A couple of chances, half chances, but by that point, I think we knew it it was gone. And uh, yeah, and then I did what most most people did after the game and signed out of Twitter and just yeah. uh, wrote it out because you just knew what was going to happen. Um, but I, I think it really speaks volumes about um, about. I think where we are as a fan base and and what happens next because yeah. that's I will say it, mate. That's a performance that gets a Watford manager the sack. Yes, it is. We've it seen is. that time and time again. 
Um, and and obviously, what I what I would say is, um, and we'll talk about it. When when I think Huddersfield scored their second, mm. we didn't have a recognised right back, left back, or centre midfielders on the pitch. Yeah. Which, if you're talking about key positions, that's just unacceptable. And um, don't worry, uh, Watford Way boys, uh, we are we will we'll be talking about this in a bit more detail in a minute. But um, you know, they wanted that they asked about Andrews. We chatted about. Um, why Andrews again didn't start, yeah. and I think that's I think that's something that, that we can talk about, and, and we are going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. So that was my very brief sum- summarization of the Huddersfield game. In a word, it was it was woeful, yeah. and I don't really know where we go from here because that's that's the season done now. We, we I think we all agreed that we had to win these three games: Rotherham, Huddersfield, and Millwall. We had to get nine points to um, to give us a shot at sort of a shot at a chance at the playoffs. If I can be vague. Mm. Yeah, I think the the playoffs can are pretty much now. done now. Yeah. Yes, that's it, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we looked at the start of the season 12 to 6. I think that's still fairly fairly comfortable to happen. Um, we'll just continue getting a win, a draw, a loss, essentially until the end of the season. Um, and I, I assume now but we'll, we'll probably finish between 12th and 10th. Um, I would make. Yeah, sure. I could see us. I could see us dropping down to thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm. I could see it, it as well, but I'm just. It's. It's hoping me that that uh, that it's driving that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Huddersfield sounded awful. Uh, I looked at Twitter. Everyone was saying we're getting relegated. Uh, so I logged <laughs> out of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's. Uh, it does get well, quite that's... silly after, and it's always Huddersfield at home. And, um, but, uh, yeah, Huddersfield. Huddersfield are a bad football. Are a bad championship football team. They're, they are yeah. a bad championship football team, and I'm I mean that with the greatest of respect. But I think I'm pretty confident there aren't any Huddersfield fans listening to this. So uh, yeah, they were not good. Their plan was a bit like Rotherham: work a set piece, stick a ball into the box, and see what happens. Yes. Yeah. But. Uh... Yeah, what what I did want to get on to, um, well, just before we we speak about the uh, the Andrews decision, you know, to just keep cons- uh, consistently leave him on the bench at the start of games, um, it's it's getting increasingly more frustrating now. Uh, I think it, it's uh, it's something that has has crept up for a while, but. You know, we we've kind of been able to grind out some points, and and everyone's sort of gone, okay, yeah, we know there's a problem there, but, um, you know, we're we're getting getting the results, so we'll let it slide. As you mentioned, you know, when we conceded the second goal, we didn't have a recognised right back, left back, or centre mid on the pitch. I understand when something isn't working, you've got to change it, and. In all fairness to to hooking two central midfielders after 27 minutes, that shows something clearly was abhorrently wrong um, in that mm. midfield. And but it was. At the same they time, were rightly substituted. They, I imagine they were rightly substituted. However, looking at the bench, you then no longer have a central midfielder on on yeah. on the bench. Chak Vatanz is the only player that off the bench could play in midfield. Um, mm-hmm. Tomins isn't a central midfielder, and no. you know you're you're playing your central midfielder Tom Deli Bashiru at right back when you have two recognised right backs on the bench. You have Ryan Andrews and Gaki is back from injury. I'm not expecting Ngakia to start at right back, but what has Andrews got to do now? He's been rested for possibly five six games now. The guy yeah. can play football. His legs work. Bringing yeah. him on in the after after the eighty fifth plus minute is so unbelievably pointless for him, and the position. It's genuinely so confusing to me why yeah. you would leave Deli Bashir right back. And I appreciate he's not doing a bad job there, but he's no. not a right back, and you don't <laughs> yeah. have another central midfielder on the bench. It yeah. it just decisions like that. Are confusing, and rightly or wrongly, hooking players is not going to help with the dressing room atmosphere. And you know, we were oh, chatting to you. Well, you yeah. were chatting to the Watford way yesterday about 
you know, potentially has about battle lost the, the dressing room. Um, I think personally, that's that's a surefire way of doing it, hooking players, and you yeah, know, you're not buying into a philosophy where people are playing out of position, and people aren't getting a look in when their position is wide open. You know, this is it's uh, all, yeah, uh, it's all adding into a melting pot that is not positive. No, it's not, and um, you know, I think that's key. I think that's a really key point to bring out is, you know, doing that to young players, young players who everybody at the club knows have a high high ceiling. Mm. Particularly um, Kone. I mean, Kambi is only, what, 25, 24? He's still got a yeah. lot of football to play. Yeah. I mean, uh, sort of looking at it, Kambi, I think, accepted I say accepted. I mean, he 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 came off, high fived everybody, and just sort of got on the bench. But Coney went straight down the tunnel, and he looked furious. Um, so I think he was just embarrassed. But what what you don't want to do when you're in a rut and you are um, struggling for form, and what you need is a team that is together. Mm. You sh- you cannot be doing singling out players like that no. because that's what. <laughs> And I, I know the rumours have started and um, about give it Troy till the end of the season. I mean, I'm going to say it right now. No. I would hate that decision. No. I'm really sorry. Yeah, Any no, Troy Deeney no. fans, I just, I do not. Firstly, I don't think he's a very good football manager. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. And secondly, I don't like the way he's carried himself uh, since he's retired. I, I don't like the way he's spoken about football, what he's done. Um I just I, I don't want that kind of um I don't really want that kind of culture coming into the into that dressing room. Mm. Um but you know you you'll you'll break um you'll break people's uh, morale. And then then you've lost the dressing room and you you've then lost the one thing that we know that the Pozzos value um which is what is happening on the training ground, what is happening with the squad. Um, I think it's a surefire way to to get to get the boot. Yeah, I and mean, I think coming, you're right. If something if it is... continues, it it will happen because we know how the Pozzos operate, and and whether that's obviously that's not the right way of doing things, but no. this is the situation we're in. You know, we could have said this five six managers ago now. Rob Edwards, yeah. Slavin Bilic, Chris Wilder, pretty much everyone from the past three or four seasons you're looking at now. Bar yeah. boy Hodgson, but yeah, but it's, it's they, the they same. don't give it's... him time, they don't give him players, they don't give them the the backing they need, and all that happens is the same culture is there, season on season, it all comes undone eventually, and the Pozzo is given the boot, bring in someone, he'll make a positive impact for a couple of months, and the, yeah, the process just recycles Start to and, get. and that's Start where to i get. understand why people get so frustrated with the potzos and why yeah. twitter goes into complete meltdown as soon as we yeah. lose a game of football uh, i mean i mean for the first time ever i'm properly on the side of a change in ownership yeah if if val goes this week or if val goes but no if val goes this week i will be firmly right I'm done with with Mr Pozzo because it's insanity it's Mm. literally the definition of insanity you cannot keep doing this you cannot keep changing a manager thinking it will work he hasn't even got the cover these days to be like don't worry you've got a quality squad to work with and we expect better no you didn't back Val in the window window. which was which was the time to do it. Let's be honest. We were on the up. We went into New Year's Day, you know, with a with a really entertaining game of football against Plymouth. We couldn't defend, but we scored some great goals, and it was, you know, it was just an enjoyable game of football. Mm. And the the mood was up. People were interested, and there was just a general good vibe around around the club. And uh, and he's not backed him. We spent the money to sign Jack Fantadze. I'll leave that for other people to discuss whether that was a good thing to do or not. Um, but if if the decision was we're not backing you because we want to clear the debts and we, so we can have a fresh start in the summer, 
then you cannot sack Val. It doesn't logically. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, make it's, sense. It's literally you are shooting yourself in the foot because. You've you're starting one, again. You've given one reason as to why you would keep a manager and rebuild, and then yeah. you're literally doing the other thing. And you yeah. are right. It's the definition of insanity. You're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And unfortunately, the main constant behind all of the failure that has occurred in the past, I don't know, five seasons, is yeah. at the fault of the Potsos now. And it's, it's plain to see for a lot of people... You know, I'd I'd like to think we've been quite balanced on the podcast over the past year. Yeah, we've yeah. we've supported certain decisions that a lot of people haven't, and yeah. we've you know maintained there are some reasons why things are being done. Looking looking at certain sackings, Billich, for example, bringing in Wilder, he was a yeah a, a decent appointment, but then you're looking at the other side of it and thinking. Why was Wilder even brought in? Why was Billich brought in? When you're setting yeah. up these projects, in inverted commas, and then <laughs> just shutting the door on them after, well, yeah. in Rob Edwards' case, it was two months, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, th that's the laughable thing, mate. We, If we'd have had the minerals to stick with Rob Edwards, we'd have been in the same position. We'd have been... A, today we'd be in the same position with Rob Edwards than we then probably higher. I'll be honest with you. Mm. If Rob Edwards had stayed, we probably wouldn't have been promoted last season, but you know, we, we'd have had a bit of momentum building. We might've had a couple yeah. of windows that you're, to try and sign not players worse for him. Off, are you? I think that the main no. problem is, no. is that managers come in and try and, you know, stamp down their style of football, but then, Everything they do is swept up from under the players after a couple of yeah. months. New style of football is brought in, new faces. And we said this until we were blue in the face last season. The players need consistency. And in the case of certain players, like Saar, it's completely ruined their careers. Saar yeah. has now gone to Marseille, where they've had four managers in the past year. He, <laughs> his career has been completely hampered by constant managerial changes and it's not exactly working in Udinese is it either so nope. I think on multiple occasions now you're looking at it and thinking I don't quite believe it's the manager's problem anymore no, it's, it's absolutely not I mean you could have a whole podcast on bringing Gianluca Nani back in as the, uh, as the sort of the technical director mm. and you know what the hell is that all about it, I, I per personally, in sport, I don't really believe in going back after you've let somebody go. No. Um, Dennis excluded because I think that's a slightly different set of circumstances for that one. Yeah, but I, I think managerially, I it's 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 a big managerially. Moment. Managerially, it doesn't make sense. Uh, so so if it didn't work for Gianluca Nani the first time, why would bringing him back now suddenly work? Um, I, th I just think that at every layer now. Um, that that needs to be changed. It yes. just needs to all yeah. be changed. I did want to just say, actually, um, I was thinking about that. Now that you mentioned you're bringing a new technical director. Mm. They have stripped things back now, and there is nothing to hide behind anymore. I think nope. that's that's got to be highlighted. Last season, you were looking at particularly the transfers. And, you know, yeah. they could fall back on. Well, there's too many people involved. It was getting too clouded, the transfers. Yeah. There was five or six people involved, including various managers. It was there was yeah. it was too busy. Now you're looking yeah. at it this season. There's two or three people involved, including a very hands-on manager that you didn't back. Now you're looking at it and going, I can't hide behind that anymore. Yeah. And people and... are noticing <laughs> Yeah, people are noticing. We we said on the pod, just changing tack very slightly, just going back to Val, we said the one thing that would get Val the sack is his uh, insistence on a small squad and his yes. insistence on being happy with a small squad. And also, the other thing that is now coming to light is, frankly, I think sometimes he's too, too honest with the press because hmm. he's said about the small squad. But, for example... Yesterday, 
he said before the game kicked off, we've had a full week, we're rested, we're raring to go, and you are going to see a difference. You will see what a full week of rest means for the club, and you'll see us come out and attack. And I, I mean, I don't know how to describe, I can't put into words just how bad we were. And that then just makes everybody turn around and go, well, you've got that wrong then. Your coaching isn't good enough. If you're saying that a full week of rest means this, and then we turn out a performance of that quality, mm. um, I want—I mean, I want to be clear. I don't want Val to get sacked. No, no, neither because do I. no, I, I don't want him to. I don't want him to go. go. He's been as—he's been the best that we've seen make a real positive impact in such a short space of time. Yeah, um, yeah, the the. I mean, it was November set in stone. To December. I think Wilder did a good job of highlighting a lot of problems in the club, and it was it was refreshing. Yeah. Uh, to he, say did, the least. he did. He did nothing to um, affect them, though, did he? At yeah. least Valor's. At least Valor's. Tro- well, uh, we'll wait to see what happens next. But at least Val's worked to sort the discipline out. He's tried to bring a style of play. He's been clear with the per- player he wants. Yeah. Um. And you know just looking back to the sort of the first couple of games of the season, we were, we weren't winning games because we just couldn't finish the chance. And we were, we were playing good football. It was enjoyable mm. football. Yes. And that's what's vanished now. That's completely dried up. And they looked, they, they just looked terrified yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're, uh, they're scared of making mistakes and you're right. You know, that really nice football we had at the start of the season, um, lots of patterns of play, Shifting the ball around nicely, inverted fullbacks. Um, yeah, that seems to have really disappeared off off of a cliff. Um, we're now it now seems to be relying on moments of quality that really pull through for us, uh, individual yeah. quality. And you know, I I think potentially if results continue to go in this direction, and the performances are lackluster. And then you're looking at internal problems, players are not mm. buying into it anymore. Then yeah. in a few weeks' time, we'll be sat on the podcast saying, this is who is replacing Ishmael. This is what we think yeah. is going to happen between now and the end of the season. And yeah, it's the, it's the same cycle. It's the same cycle oh, all over again. Same but cycle. And, I don't and, want to keep repeating gonna... myself. No. Um, <laughs> Because no, you're starting to sound like Potso. Cycle. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 depressing, and I think yeah. yesterday I was it was just so deflating and demoralising to realise that we are we're a picture of a corner flag away from starting the cycle again. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just I don't I just don't want that. No, I just don't. No, I, I don't just think don't anyone want does. That. Um, no. Yeah, it's not it's not a nice position to be in, really. Uh, you look at the league table, you're thinking, with the squad we have, I would expect to be maybe a couple of places higher, playing some decent football, properly rebuilding. But I feel like it's it's disappearing slowly, and I'm not particularly sure what you do to rectify it. Um, I think, like you said, January was the chance to bring in fresh players, maybe make the squad a little bit bigger just so that we have more depth. Um, yeah. And now I feel like the timing has, has is, you know, shrinking yeah. for, for Ishmael. Yeah. And I'm not sure, really, if you get to the end of the season, how he then sets up a pre-season that he had similar to the start of this season where he got the players on board. It was all... Very nice philosophy and a great working atmosphere. I'm not sure how you fix that problem if, you know, if there are grumbles from from players yeah. in the squad. Uh, I think you're looking at people like Loser, where they got rid of him, and now similar issues are happening. With well, that's players. it. That's that's it. Uh, that's the problem now. That's the problem we face. And for, uh, this way, you come back to you know the Kone point. Which he's made already, but he Kone is has been so good for us all season. Mm. You know, really a great engine in the midfield. Some great goals, been a real bright spark. Made, didn't play well, had a bad game, 
young pro is going to have a bad game. Yeah. Um, and you hooked him. Um, and if if he if his head drops, then ha, you know how he has to, Val has to just manage that really well. I really hope that he took him to one side yeah, today. Yeah, you know, so after the right. game or or today, he had a phone call with him and explained it through to him. Yes. Um, yeah, to yeah. try and get him back on because if he's just blanked him and you know what was it Ian Beale him, uh, Mike yeah. or whatever the Mick whatever Bill. the Sunderland Mick Beale. Uh, Ian Bill, I think it was East Enders. Um <laughs> Then, uh, then that's just awful. Yeah, it's awful curtains, isn't it? Um, man, man, man yeah, management. I saw an interesting thing from uh, Andrew French say that Cohn actually took a shortcut in in front of the media suite, which he's never done before. So obviously, it, it did have some sort of an effect on him. Um, but like you said, I, I really do hope that there was a phone call today or something just to explain to him because. Kone, whilst having a really high ceiling as a professional football player, you know we we could see him shrink back into his his shell that he was in yeah. for a lot of a lot of months before. I don't know that that f- switch flicked in him, um, you know, around October time last last year. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I feel like that's enough ranting for today, James. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Nice to I get, so. nice to talk everything out. I, f- I think, uh, yeah, my opinion is uh, is much more solidified now than than it was before when you actually talk. That's it what out it's all about. about it. Um, That's yeah. what it's all about. Is, and yeah. uh, we we you know obviously <clears throat> Watford way asked us to talk about sort of Ryan Andrews and and Val- Valerian sort of man management. So if anybody is listening and wants to wants us to talk about. A topic or anything that you're sort of yes, burning on your yeah, mind. Yeah, please do drop us. Just let us know. Get get in touch with us. We'd be delighted to uh, to talk it through. Um, through I think the easiest way is probably on on our Twitter uh, yes. DM. So yeah, just yeah. you know just slide leave, in there. Leave us a comment underneath the. Uh, leave us a comment. YouTube yeah, we'll, we'll be delighted to talk through any of those points. So um, yeah, so thanks for thanks for the what for way for reaching out. Much appreciated. But uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So um, in a word, mate. Does Val go this week? No. No, I don't think he goes, no. I'll hold you to it. <laughs> oh dear. This is going to be clipped, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. All right then. That that's, feels like more than enough ranting for, for today. Um, and I'm sure an emergency pod will probably be coming in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Um, possibly on, on a Tuesday evening or something crazy like that. We'll, we'll be something terrible, yeah. Speeding to, to record a, a 20 minute podcast talking about <laughs> whether we're on, where we're, whether we're in with a shout of the Watford job. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's looking at, um, looking at how Frank Lampard set his teams up, uh, for, uh, Derby <laughs> County and Villa cause he'll be, he'll be the next name in. Yeah. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he certainly will be on the on the list of many names as well as Kike Sanchez Flores Part Three. But on the plus side, on the plus side, mm. at least we have got Millwall next week, who we always travel uh, to Millwall really <laughs> nicely. Really well too, yeah. And, uh, to the New Den, that's always a good place to go. Yes, a fantastic place to go with a spiralling fan base. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah. possibly the best fixture possible. Um, all right then, oh. guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to the podcast. I've got to say, if you do watch this on YouTube, thank you so much. Recently, um, you know the, the support on there has actually been crazy. Uh, people have been engaging, watching the pod for you know a, you know a really decent length of time. So if that is one of you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we appreciate all the new followers on Twitter and the new subscribers everywhere. Um, it's nice to to see the pod growing, um, isn't it, James? Oh, it's great, yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much for listening, and we will see you again very soon, hopefully next weekend, and hopefully not with an emergency pod, but needs must. Take care, Hornets, and uh, keep the faith. Chin up, everybody. See you later.